Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Peer Geek Podcast and as always, absolute pleasure to be here. Now, I'm really excited today because I have a guest. We've been able to drill down a time that suits the two of us and we've been going back and forth to try and make this happen and I'm really excited to introduce to you Jessica Shawley. How are you, Jessica? I'm doing well. Thank you, Jared. You're welcome. And I mean, before we start, thank you for um, coming on to the episode and um, I hope we can dive into some some technology and PE, PE stuff um, that excites you. But, you know, for those people that haven't, um, you know, come across you online, whereabouts do you teach and, and how long have you been doing that? Oh, yes. I, um, I'm a middle school physical education and health teacher in Moscow, Idaho in the United States. Awesome. And I've been there about 12, 12 and a half years now. Mm-hmm. And, um, and for you, you know, for everyone who's listening right now, you're currently not even in the country. That's right. Yeah. I am in Dublin, Ireland, that's, enjoying some vacation. That's fantastic. And I mean, that's a really exciting thing about teaching. I think we get this, we get this opportunity to do a little bit of travel in our downtime and, uh, and teaching is universal. And I think you're over there learning at the moment as well. Yeah, absolutely. There just so happens to be a, there was a, the PE Pays Conference. It's a research forum for um, the physical education, physical activity and youth for Ireland, all the researchers from the universities and other teachers. And they had a one day research forum and it was just absolutely amazing to be able to listen to the research that's going on and um, just to you know, learn about how there's so many similarities in mm-hmm. our profession across the globe and then how people are tackling them in different ways um, using different lenses and how there's there's a lot of the same things as well. So I got to learn a ton of a ton of things. It was super exciting to meet people and um, to have a lot of people that we knew that were in common, you know, or to meet people like, oh, I've read your paper or I know that name and uh, I got to meet um, and meet up with a friend, Deborah Tannehill, and her latest book just came out, the uh, update for the additions for the standards-based grading, and it's fantastic to speak with her. So it was really a, like just a, a, just a great day. I couldn't ask for anything better to be able to travel internationally and meet a bunch of PE geek friends, you know, in a way. It was fantastic. Awesome. And then that's what really attracted me to, uh, and why, partly why I wanted to get you onto the episode is you are seriously... Um, you know, enthusiastic about the physical education profession. And there you are, you're on your vacation and you're still taking, <laughs> you're still taking time to, to soak it all in. So that's really impressive. Yep. Definitely, um, <laughs> definitely ingrained in you, which is, which is exciting. So uh, if you can think back to uh, a time uh, maybe earlier on before you became a phys ed teacher, was there a moment or something that actually, you know, made you decide that this is the path for you? Uh, God, that's a really good question. I think, I mean, I have um, aunts that were teachers, and it's a, so it's a little bit in our family. But um, being the oldest of several several children and grandchildren, I was just always working with youth and really enjoyed it. And um, like growing up in the states, we have 4-H clubs, which I know is internationally as well. So 4-H FFA, I just really enjoyed working with other people and um, being active, and I saw the value in that. And mm-hmm. so. Um, and I was enjoying coaching and different sports. I was just a really active kid. I grew up on outside in the country as well. And so that really all led down that path of, of teaching. And I actually was certified. I'm certified in multiple areas, health, fitness, and math. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be multifaceted and, and that's what kind of helped me land my, my first job as well as having those multiple certifications. But it just kind of hit me in high school when we were finalizing our senior project and I got to volunteer at a youth camp and um, design different sports activities for um, uh, diff- uh, some youth groups. And it was just fantastic. I had a blast and always helped with like our sports camps and stuff. So it's just something I've always enjoyed doing and it it was amazing that it could lead to a career path that, that now I just absolutely enjoy. You know, I'm doing yeah. exactly what I love. Exactly. And it's, it's not too dissimilar to mine. I mean, I was at the same age, you know, in high school and I love sport, loved coaching, loved being involved in that sort of stuff. But I also loved technology. Like I was mm. you know, teaching myself how to code and um, the, the amalgamation of those two things really was, okay, I can be a PE teacher and my second 
area of teaching will be, you know, information technology. So that's pretty much how the, the enthusiasm for what, you know, what has become the peer geek originally started. It was because I had the love for both of those two things. So what about technology for you? I mean, you, you seem to be well connected with, with educators online, um, social media and so forth. And um, from what I've seen, you're using lots of other tech in your class. Why did that happen or where did that happen for you and why? Well, Carl, I, what, I guess the best way to describe that really is like through my grant writing journey. And that's been a big part of my teaching is writing grants. And that was because I guess I was tired of hearing, you know, people complain about, you know, oh, we don't have the budget. We can't do this. We can't do that. I'm not a can't person. <laughs> I just, I'm like, I'm, there has to be a way. Be, has to be a way. There has to be a way. Yeah, either that or you can't complain about it. You know, that's I'm like I don't want to hear myself complain about it. So either I'm going to do it or not do it. Mm -hmm. And I looked into um, a lot of grant writing early on in my career because I I just knew there was a way, and it was really there was also this that time that timeline. It was just that catalyst time where health and fitness was beginning to make. Um, more of a, that forefront out there in the media and research wise still early on. And so there was a lot of these grant writing opportunities that on the forefront weren't um, PE only grants, but they hadn't awarded grants to PE teachers yet. So mm -hmm. I applied for, you know, um, it was the Quest Education Foundation Technology Grant and they hadn't funded PE yet. Yeah. And I was like, well, then why not me? And so it was our, our local Idaho Quest grant, and that was my very first grant, and it was a $7,500 grant for heart rate monitors. You know, and I'd been doing a lot of research. I was reading all the articles from Now Shape America, just trying to stay really current. And that was, you know, still at the time where there wasn't all these wonderful blogs and all these wonderful websites that I, I read a lot. I do a lot of the websites, but I also still love all the journals, the hard copy stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I was really thankful for that as I got this heart rate monitor grant after reading about how great heart rate monitors could be for my students. And then that next year, I got a small grant through our Idaho Association um, for pedometers. Mm -hmm. You know, I just knew these heart rate monitors and these pedometers could really be a catalyst for my program. Um, my program was really, I inherited a more traditional program that was trying to change, you know, and was really integrating in more fitness. So yeah. it was yeah. at that time where students were kind of fighting it because it was very new to them, where you had young teachers who were trying to find a way. And I knew te te technology could be that bridge. And then from there, it's just you know, exploded. And now all, a lot more of the grant opportunities are out there now too. So I'm always looking for those grant opportunities. I mean, all my small grants, it's like $50,000 over 10 or 12 years. That's a lot of money. Absolutely. And it's not just been for my PE program. It's been for my school as well because there's great um, programs through like Field to Play 60 here in the States where it's not a PE only grant. It's for your entire school community. So I, I've been able to build up my own program and get that grant money and, and, you know, do innovations and technology. And then I've been able to give that to my school as well. And then now, um, our district, we received the Carol and White physical education program grant, the PEP grant. So we just finished our first year out of a three-year grant and that, oh boy, I mean, from start to finish to look at the start of my career or these small grants now to where there's this huge grant that's brought in, an exponential amount in one year. It's, yeah. it's just been amazing. And I know that technology, the kids feed off of it. They love mm -hmm. it. They love the innovations and then they can apply it at home. It's just been a, it's been a fantastic bridge really with my students. For sure. I mean, I, re I really want to touch on the fact there that you mentioned about the grants and particularly your mentality that you have that there's always a way that's possible. And, you know, these, these aren't necessarily just barriers. I mean, they can be overcome if you have that mindset that you certainly have. And I mean, I mentioned that because one of the most popular emails that I get, you know, on a daily basis is related to grants and funding and, and so on. And mm -hmm. a lot of people just immediately assume that, that if they can't get that, you know, or maybe they haven't applied before and they think that it's in the too hard basket. But, you know, you've, you're living proof that you can definitely do it if you put your mind to it and apply for these things and, um, you know, then it starts to snowball and you start to see the really yeah. big, big benefit that you're 
that you're experiencing now. So for you, what has been some of the, you know, you mentioned pedometers and heart rate monitors. What have been some of the other things that um, you may have experimented with and, and had some success with? Uh, technology wise, right? Yeah, We're technology the, wise. Yeah. Well, um, for, so for sure, starting with the heart rate monitors, the pedometers, and then, then just trying out the different kind of pedometers. And now, uh, my entire department and, um, our district now we have the downloadable ones that go for fit step pro pedometers that download. Yep. And so we have our surface pro laptop, which before then we, before, um, larger grant, we just had a, any old laptop that we could get mm-hmm. through the school. And we even had like two teachers on one before we could even have our own, each have our own. And, um, I love these downloadable pedometers for the kids to be able to see their, their work every day. For me to be able to see their work every day, for me to get the feedback that these pedometers provide on, did I design an active lesson? Yeah. You know, how did how did what I plan really resonate with the work that was done? Mm-hmm. And what were the MVPA levels? And what was the activity time? And being able to just encourage kids just to be active, you know, that's been a really, um, that's been a huge one for me. And then being able to use the Surface Pro to, um you know, show any PowerPoints or any online videos. And um, I love using my iPad, you know, all the apps that are out there, having that available for the students with the Apple TV and the remote is is just is huge. I've really enjoyed that, um, being able to project things. We, you know, set up in our gym, we hung a sheet from a curtain. We mm-hmm. have the curtains that um, we have three different, smaller floors and so we have curtains that can come down and so we hang a sheet from one of the curtains so we can project it up to for everyone to see and um another great piece of equipment that I love to use is a wireless mic and I know that's not like uh you know like acting technology apps or anything like that but Mm -hmm. it saved my voice yeah I have a very small voice in a way um (laughs) and when I was coaching I'd always go through that in the beginning of the year teaching, always go through that, lose my voice first and then build it back up. But for the kids to be able to hear you while you're pumping up the music, I think music is such a huge, huge thing for the students to keep, to keep them moving and to keep you excited. It's been really neat to be able to build that, um, that framework or that platform where, you know, I come out in the morning, I hang up my pedometers, I get my computer plugged in, I have my iPad ready to go. You know, if we've got the projector going, that's ready to go. We've got the remote, we've got the music blasting. Um, it's It's been really neat to piece all these things together. And I'm kind of that person that, you know, is always looking for those new ideas. And then I'm trying it out. And then mm-hmm. if it works, I'm sharing it with everybody else in my district. Hey, here's an idea. Here's a speaker that we just purchased that we really like. And um, yeah, it's, 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 I'm willing to try it all. And I've, when I find that it works, I share it. And the good part, I mean, the best part about that, and the thing I admire most in teachers is that, is that, um, willingness to try things and to learn because I mean, it's ultimately, I've said this many times before on the podcast, that's what we expect the students to do. We expect them to learn and to try and to fail and to succeed. And I mean, when teachers assume that they don't have to do the same thing, uh, I think it's a recipe for disaster. So, you, I mean, you've proven again that that's a, that's a really good um, asset to have. So uh, you, you mentioned before about, um, you know, some apps and, and websites and so on. What are some that you've, you know, used recently or um, had success with that you'd be willing to share? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I um, Some of my go-to ones that I've really enjoyed using is I, I like to use Team Shake on a regular basis. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> it's so great and oh gosh I'm like where was this you know <laughs> where was this earlier such a genius idea um being able to mix up the kids and and get the teams going right away and not wasting a lot of time with picking the teams um Tabata Pro or Seconds Pro those interval interval music timers Seconds Pro are is seriously powerful seriously it's, yeah it's essential it's really essential for people and to build those different timers up and to be able to use those at a moment's notice. I mean, you can do anything with that in a good playlist. Uh, I really enjoyed purchasing 
the Tabata Kids playlist recently on iTunes as well. He did the presentation on Pete, I believe is his name, at Shape America. And he, they, him and his brother mixed up some really great tunes. And um, I, you know, I like to bust that out with my students and, and get a Tabata in with whatever we're doing and talk to him about it. And it's some great music. And um, being able to teach the students, you know, how to use these apps is really, really something that I enjoy doing as well. Um, we actually had a um, like a fitness technology app showcase week. We do, we do, uh, we have 72 minute periods twice a week and then twice a week we have 49 minute class periods. Mm -hmm. So on our 72 minute class periods, instead of focusing on just one topic, like, so if I'm doing tennis, you know, for the week, it's not just tennis, there's always other things with it. But on those 72 minute days, we're doing some large group training, usually with all three of the classes at once. That's where our health related fitness, our skill related fitness, our nutrition content comes into play. And, and um, so we have two lessons on that. Yeah. And, and we, we had a week, a week or two where we were showcasing health and fitness app technology. So we were showing the students the seven minute workout apps. Like I, I really enjoy the Johnson and Johnson seven minute workout app. Um, and so we'd go through that, the Nike training club app, being able to show the students the different levels of workouts and how they can challenge them differently. Mm -hmm. And then we did, um, you know, showing them the, my fitness pal or the lose it, um, the tracker just to log your, their food, log their activity, you know, and be able to set goals for themselves and just to, it's like that food log. We do food logs now that are a requirement of the PEP grant, but we were already doing that previously with our students. So food logs and exercise logs or physical activity logs. So they were just aware, you know, so it's the technology really creates that platform because it's so much easier to use the technology because it's right there, you know, rather than writing it down on that piece of paper that's been lost 10 times in your yes, house. Absolutely. And that's <laughs> and, the that's the really big attractive feature of it. You've always got it. So, I mean, students always have access to it so they can make changes. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. And then so it, when we were doing that, you know, it's it's that 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 shining moment when the student comes to you the next week. You know, this girl comes up to me during during the warm-ups and she's like, Mrs. Shelley, guess what? We downloaded that app. And I made my dad do that with me two times. And then my cousins, we did it another two times, you know. And so they were doing the seven-minute workout app over the weekend as a family. And she just had a blast. And she had a blast challenging her dad, you know. And there she was getting her her dad active. And then that that's what it's all about is connecting with the kids. They're applying it at home. They're making connections with their parents. And it's a tool that she, she has, you know? And so I was just like, ah, this is why I do what I do. They're taking yeah. it home. They're applying it. You've reached one kid. You've probably reached more, but it's always nice when that one's willing to share with you that story, you know, just mm -hmm. freely. Hey, Miss Sholly, guess what? And she was so excited and so proud of herself. So we really like showcasing those apps. Um, we were really fortunate enough to get – um, we, we only had one iPad and we, we worked that iPad to death in our department for so many different things. And now we each have our own teacher iPad and then we were able to purchase some iPad minis. Well, with that, um, we, we really kind of started to test the gamut of, um, the gamut of using technology in PE because we, we didn't have a gym for a year. Mm -hmm. So we didn't, we didn't have a multi-purpose room to use either. So we were doing our physical education classes out of um, classrooms for the last year. So it's only been within the last two months of this school year that we got our gym back. And that was a whole process in itself, trying to settle back into a gym at the end of a year. So it was like starting a new year at the end of a year. It was quite odd. But in the classrooms, we were just like, you know, we're going to pilot out and try things out we've never done before. So we had our iPad minis that just came in. We, you know, did the UberSense and Coaches Eye apps. The kids um, recorded themselves, analyzed themselves. We're going to be able to use that even more now in the future of them designing their own workouts. And they loved it. They were out in the halls. They were analyzing themselves. Um, my coworker, John, he taught that unit. He had a blast, you know, teaching the kids that. The kids built their own, um, they bounced the ball off of several different items in the classroom, whether it's a stack of books or a chair. They were using angles 
to land in the bucket. We have the large cup stacking buckets and mm-hmm. we used a foam ball and they had to use math and angles and trajectories to bounce it off in different um, different ways, record it, write it down. And they had to film it with the iPad minis when it was successful. Yeah. And then they the kids were showing different classes their successes. And um, in my one of my rotations, I did activity break filming with the students. That's just an initiative we've been trying as part of the active, active healthy schools model is, you know, brain boosters or activity breaks, whatever name you want to use is providing teachers with some training and tools. And I thought, well, why not really train the kids, you know, like really go grassroots. Mm -hmm. So we, um, we learned several of them in our classroom, and then the students got to design their own activity breaks. And then we used the iPad to record them, to share them with the students. They got so excited because they got to choose their own music on the iPod. They got to wear the teacher mic, so I let them wear my wireless mic. They got all mic'd up, and they led a routine with um, with their smaller groups. And we're going to carry that into next year with another um, – we're going to – we're going to expand that and really try and get kids involved and maybe get them um, certified, you know, quote unquote certified, get them a little business card that they're, so cool. you know, a certified activity break leader. They can show that to their teacher. They can be called on at any time to, to do a quick um, brain booster. And that's going to be through our Fuel Up to Play 60 partnership, part of part of that program. So we really we've we've done a lot of exciting things in a small amount of time, and that's really because we're not afraid to fail, and we laugh at the times we do fail, and we share that with each other, and learn from it, and move on, and mm-hmm. and it, it it pays dividends really to to take those risks for sure. I mean, and that's that's coming back to that same point again of, of how much success you can attribute to tr- being willing to try things and and being willing to fail, and and on that on that fail front, have you had any? any situations where something hasn't <laughs> gone to plan. I mean, uh, my teaching career is full of them. And I mean, people, yeah. people often assume that, you know, because I write the PA Geek website that, you know, nothing ever goes wrong. It couldn't be further from the truth. What's, what about you? I mean, what's, what's happened that hasn't gone oh, to plan? Yeah, no, plenty of blooper moments, really. Um, one of the most recent ones was, and my even my principal got to take part in it, which is always you know great when your supervisor comes through and you're having that great moment. Um, you know, just just even silly, simple things like uh, we'd gotten um, we'd pieced together this new to us tech cart, so we found an old cart you, that no one wanted. So we always take those. We're like, okay, no one wants this. We're claiming it. We love the wheeled carts. <laughs> So we found this this great big one. Oh, it was awesome, beautiful. We put our amp on it and our projector, an old projector, our, our old combo VHS DVD player. You know, we're so proud. I'm so proud of this, you know, mm-hmm. tech cart. And we just were getting back into the gym. So I was like, okay, it's all wired together. Um, my coworkers helped me wire it together during our collaboration time. I was like, all right, I'm using this next week. So I get up there to start turning it on. I get it turned on, and I'm starting to log in, and then I realize, oh, the projector's upside down because it used to be mounted, and so it was it was flipped, and I was like, oh, no problem. I'll just use the remote, and of course, I'm getting my kids already going with some instant warm-ups and some activities, and, and they're going and doing, and I cannot flip this projector, and I'm like, no, it's this easy. I've done this a million times, the remote. Then my principal's coming in and the remote's not working, either the battery's dead or it's just not responding. I can't flip the projector. And then it was just as simple as resetting the projector. But of course, my principal and I were stubborn and we were trying to make it, you know, make the remote work how we knew it should work. And really, we should have just reset it, um, trying to get the Apple TV to work correctly you know and and the kids they're so patient and funny and they're like just do this Michelle or just do this and I'm like I know I've done this a million times and it you know has to do with the the wi-fi you know the new wi-fi in the gym setting and the other great it's always so important to have a backup plan because it um another time I was teaching the dance unit and of course, I'm trying to show a new, I teach some of it, but I like to show videos too. Yeah. So I was showing, uh, the lesson was part of this to show this dance video and then we we're going to do it. Well, that was when 
the tech crew decided to come in and they had to um, redo the Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi was down, like right in the middle of the lesson. And so I was like, okay, here's my iPhone, plug that in, get some music going, teach a, teach a song. We're going to do a different dance. And so just, I think anything that can go wrong has gone wrong for me. Um, and I look forward to more of those fun blooper moments because all I can do is laugh and be frustrated or I'm sometimes impatient with the speed at which it happens. I'm like, this worked faster last time or in my mind, it should have gone a lot faster. So just having that patience, I think is always that it always teaches me that like to have patience and my coworkers laugh at me. They get a good laugh when I share my technology stories. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's awesome. Definitely is, um, you know, and PE teachers in general seem to be, you know, more willing to actually um, be out there and, uh, you know, experience failures and we're a little bit more adaptable in some ways. So, you know, the fact that you mentioned that you've only just got your gym back, you know, how many other um, areas in the school would be willing to lose their classroom and still right. make it work and still innovate and still, you know, do some really impressive stuff um, along the way. So really appreciate um, your time today, Jessica. Where can people find out or connect with you um, if they'd like to do so? Ah, uh, well, I'm on Twitter at um, it's just at Jessica Shawley and I'm on Facebook. I'm on Voxer. Um, my Tell Voxer. us about Voxer. What's Voxer? Ah, oh, I love Voxer. Yeah, that's another app I use all the time. And um, Voxer is like this, oh, it's like this wonderful behind the scenes chat chat room like there's so many different great chats that are going on in the physical education realm there's a pedometer chat a heart rate there's probably heart rate monitor chat um there's um a secondary pe chat an elementary pe chat a general pe chat um i'm enjoying the kinesthetic classroom chat and that's my summer reading and mm -hmm. and just being able to talk with folks like you and Andy Hare, who's also over there in Australia, and just to send people different messages. It's um, you can do more information than just 140 characters, like on Twitter. It just really expands Twitter and the other mediums because you can text, you can do pictures, or you can leave voice messages, and that's what's nice. It's kind of um, like you can have this ongoing conversation with one or more people, and you pick up right where right where it's left off. So um, you don't have to always be all there all at the same moment, especially when people are, you know, 18 hours apart. And, and that's what I really appreciate about it. I'm able to, to just learn different ideas, share different ideas, and um, check in with people um, when I have the time, when the, when the time allows. It's wonderful. It's, it is. I mean, it's, I think of it sort of like a global staff, staff room. And, you know, yeah. wake, I wake up in the morning and there's been all these conversations that have, happened while I've been, you know, asleep and I get to press play on them and I get to sit there and listen to it as if it was a podcast. Um, so if, I mean, if you're listening right now and you've never been on Voxer, then head along to the .com forward slash Voxer, which is V O X E R. And you'll find a tutorial video about how to use it, how to get started. And you'll be able to connect with myself and, and Jessica. So thanks again, Jessica, for taking the time out of your day and your vacation to um, come on to the episode. And uh, really appreciate it and uh, look forward to seeing you online. Absolutely. Thank you, Jared. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm.